Alrighty, yo, what is going on? If you buy your boy, Mr. DDG94, back with another reaction video. Today, we're going to react to uh, some gang gang shit. I got some gang gang shit for y'all. Uh, we got some gang gang shit going on. So, here we go. It's going to be the 400. What? G400? And then the bopped in treetop fruits and tortilla. What the fuck? Tree tops, fruits, tortillas. What's next? The beans, nigga. The beans. <laughs> the peas. The greens. Come on, man. Y'all be making up any names for these fucking games, bro. Anyways, so let's get right into this. Welcome back to another episode of Swamp Stories. For this episode, we head to Compton. Well, actually, for this video, it's gonna be called Bompton. In my previous LA video, I explained the beginnings of South Central and Watts, but I didn't really get into Compton. Compton's history is pretty well known, and it gained a gritty reputation over the years through NWA, Boys in the Hood, and Straight Outta Compton. So people have an idea of what kinds of things go down in Compton, but they probably don't know exactly how it all works. That is what we're going to get into in this video. But before we get started, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Let me introduce you to Pyrus. Everyone knows what Pyrus are, but many people don't know where it comes from. It all started around 1970 on East Pyru Street in Compton. This is where the teenagers and street hustlers hung out and made their money. It's also where they joined together and started calling themselves the Pyrus after the street name. They decided to join the BLOOD Alliance and that's when they grew into a larger operation. It was all Pyrus together, but the unity did not last long. Internal affairs split everything up into different sections. That brings me to the Treetop Pyrus, also known as TTP. They're located south of Rosecrans Avenue between Acacia and Aranby Streets. There are multiple sets of Treetop, but the most famous one is the 400 block of Spruce Street. That is where Bompton's biggest rapper is from. When YG talks about 400, well let me say it correctly, 400, this is what it represents. Well, Treetop have not been a well-liked section for about 50 years now. They have problems with almost everyone around them. That includes another set of Pyrus. Let me introduce you to Fruit Town Pyru, also known as FTP. You might be thinking this is a goofy name, and yeah, you're not wrong, but it represents the area. Fruit Town is located on the other side of Rosecrans Avenue, right above TTP. The streets are named after fruit. Plum Street, Cherry Street, Peach Street are all good examples. Also located in Fruit Town is East Pyru Street, exactly where the Pyrus originated. Different people will say different things, but it's safe to say that they are the original Pyru. There are three typical places where you will find them. Stay away from Gonzalez Park, Cressy Street, and the Douglas Apartments, especially if you're from the treetop area, because that would most likely be the last street that you ever roll down. Yes, the Treetop vs. Fruit Town rivalry is that serious, and it has claimed a ridiculous amount of lives over the years. And the craziest part about it is they're not Treetop's only rivals. Treetop is arch rivals with the Varios in Compton, especially a section called T-Flats. T-Flats are located right across the train tracks from Treetop. So when you look at a map, Treetop is boxed in from the north and the east. Their rivals are both right there. T flat stands for tortilla flats, and yes, I know it sounds silly, but it has nothing to do with Mexican food. But the real reason might be even funnier. They're named after a romantic comedy novel. Nothing is funny about these guys though, and you'll see why in this video. The area they claim doesn't look bad at all compared to Detroit or the South. But don't let the palm trees and nice weather fool you. Compton is nothing like the way it looks. How dangerous is Compton? Well, the answer really depends on the year, which is a common theme in California. Some years the homicide rates will be low, then boom, all of a sudden out of nowhere it explodes. In 2005, Compton had a homicide rate of 67 per 100,000, which led the nation by far. It was 10 times higher than the California average. But things got much better. A decade later in 2015, the rate in Compton dropped to just 13 per 100,000. This is comparable to cities like Las Vegas and Sacramento. For Compton though, this was huge progress. Things had gotten so much better. Cause it got gentrified out there, that's why. 
So far, 2021 has been one of Compton's worst years of all time. They are on pace to reach their 2005 record. Bompton is completely out of control. This video will cover a couple of Bompton's biggest events, and then we will cover everything involving YG. But before we get into it, let me run the intro. Damn, that was just a hit. We didn't even get to the intro. You gave us the whole background, then you run the intro. Goddamn. It's a long ass intro. One thing that is off limits is strolling through rival territory, no matter what the reason. And in Compton, making that mistake can cost your life. April 16th, 2009. Three teenagers from Treetop decide to go visit a girl named Keisha after school. Well, the problem is that she lives in T-Flats territory, but the boys take their chances to go anyways. They make it to Keisha's house safely, so they think that everything is okay. Well, it's time to leave, and they decide to head down Elm Street to cross the tracks back into treetop territory. This is when a Honda creeps slowly behind them. One of the teens notices the car and gets suspicious. The driver of the car is a 24-year-old named Hammer. Hammer gets behind them and yells flats and makes a F with his hands. One of the teens turns to his two friends and says, run, just run as fast as you can and do not look back. They take off running, and the Honda screeches and speeds up. That's when one of the teens, Tyler Jenkins, turns around and BAM! He nails the driver and the car crashes into a tree. The teens would be found not long after this, and this is when things would turn left. One of the teens that took off running decided to tell the police everything that happened. He told them where to retrieve the piece that Tyler Jenkins used. He was under 18 at the time, so he's known as LH instead of his full name. This is when things would get interesting, because the men in the Honda would testify as well. They would tell investigators that they were not following the teens around and that they did not whip out on them. LH's story did not match theirs, so police got suspicious. Investigators would look for clues linking the men in the Honda to T-Flats. They found graffiti saying Hammer and NK which I won't say the word, but it starts with N and ends with ER. Then a neighbor would testify that one of the men in the Honda would yell can't be in this neighborhood. Despite the evidence of hate and affiliations, it would not be enough to help Tyler Jenkins. He would end up getting 31 years. His friend LH is the only reason he went down. Without his testimony and pointing to evidence, chances are Tyler Jenkins would have never gotten arrested. Damn. After this incident, Treetop and T-Flats would become even bigger rivals. The tensions grew further and it became on site that's, for both sides. That's kind of fucked up though. I saved your... Nigga, I saved your life, but you snitch on me? That ain't real, homie. That's that fucked up shit. Hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. We... Hold on, bro. Hell no. Nah. Hell no, nah, bro. I say... I pretty much saved your fucking life from a homicidal maniac. To get us back home safe. And you snitch on me? Bruh. You snitched on me, bruh. That's that bitch shit right there, bruh. For real, bruh. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. I gotta find the right song for this. Hell no. Nah. Damn, I ain't got no, I ain't got no good self. Wait, wait, wait what's my? Come on, man. You gonna snitch on me after I pretty much saved your fucking life? The reason you still fucking breathing right now is because I had the burner on me. If I got the burner on me, and I saved your motherfucking life, you can't get mad at me for that. That ain't make no. That don't make no sense, bro. Y'all niggas. That hey. I hope homie got jumped or something. I don't wish death on the homie. I just want him to get jumped to learn his lesson about snitching, man. Snitches get stitches, man. Especially when homie. Especially when, if homie didn't have the burner on him, all y'all be dead. All y'all be dead. Cause homie didn't. If homie didn't have the burner on him. 
You wouldn't have made it home back to your mammy If I didn't have a burner on me I saved your life Nigga the least you can do Is make sure I don't go to jail Nigga snitches out here bro You don't snitch on the gang After I pretty much saved your fucking life December 8th 2011 T-Flats member Dopey and his friend Jason Ayala are standing in front of the apartments on Elm Street. That's when two treetops walk up to them and ask, are you Dopey from TF? And before he could even answer, a man named Marcus White whips out on him and BAM! Dopey gets hit and they both take off. The treetops chase them, but eventually they give up. That's when Jason Ayala would go back to the scene to wait for police. When they arrived, he would tell them exactly what happened and who did it. He would tell them to look for a tall black man in a white shirt running towards the strip mall. That's when police would go chase him down and he would climb onto a roof and try to hide, but then they would eventually find him. Well, when they found him, he would tell them everything that happened as well. Except that his story was different. Marcus White would tell them that T-Flats men stopped them while they were simply walking down the street. He would also tell them that it was his friend Dimitri Gales who did it. So then police would go grab up Dimitri and bring him into the station. Well guess what? Do you think Dimitri would cooperate as well? Yes, of course he would, but his story was different as well. At the time, Dimitri Gales did not know that his friend had told on him. So Dimitri would tell them that he never saw White let off at all. I know you might be thinking, how was this snitching? Because he didn't incriminate his friend. But the rules are the rules, and you are not supposed to make any statements under any circumstances. Well, all that barking didn't do Marcus White any justice because he would get 20 years and his friend Dimitri Gales that he told on would get 18 years as well. Damn. Both of them would hit the yard with paperwork. Dimitri Gales is currently serving at Los Angeles County Prison and Marcus White is currently serving his time in Ironwood State Prison. If you haven't picked up on it yet, Compton is very territorial. You always have to know where you are because you can make one wrong turn and be done for. Treetop Pyrus know this reality very well, especially YG. He grew up his whole life in this environment and he claims that he gave up his life for Treetop. He is no stranger to opposition and handling himself in sketchy situations. That brings me to June 6, 2015. YG is at the studio recording songs with all of his friends around. He steps outside the studio and notices a suspicious black car pulls into the gate. Some unfamiliar guys come out of the car and YG confronts them. They claim that they live there, but YG can tell that something is not right. He heads back into the studio, and that's when his friend steps outside. The men whip out on his friend, and arguments start. YG runs outside to see what's going on, and BAM! That's when the men let off. He gets hit in the hip three times. His friend carries him to his car and drives him to the hospital. The driver loses control of the car and rams into the median and hits a parked car. YG is going unconscious in the backseat of a car that just wrecked. Thankfully an ambulance comes and YG somehow gets released the same day. He got extremely lucky to make it, especially where he was hit. If they were hollows, it would have been a different result. The next day, YG would hit the studio and he would dedicate himself to the grind for the next year, dropping hit after hit and dropping his second studio album Still Crazy. But in Compton, it's hard to avoid problems, especially when you're famous like YG and affiliated with Treetops. May 16th, 2016. Compton rapper AD, who is the guy on the No Jumper podcast who says there's no shame in paying for That has nothing to do with this. I just had to say that. Shout out to AD. But he's a rapper who has some hard songs. One of those is with YG, and they had a big video shoot in Compton. It goes well until things turn left. A car pulls up and bam, they start spraying up the video shoot. But luckily, everyone was okay. This event didn't seem to shock AD though. He went on DJ Vlad to talk about it. What happened at the video shoot with you and YG? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, the video shoot, man. It was just, you know, it's just a regular day in Compton. It, it was an average day in Compton, man. It's an average day in Compton. And, you know, I just say it was God. God was with everybody that day because it could have been ugly. Because there ain't no way that you could tell me that nobody got hit. Now let's talk about their Fruit Town rivals. 
Fruit Town became popular in the headlines starting around 2013 when Chris Brown started claiming Fruit Town Pyru. Well then, in 2017, Soulja Boy would claim that he's from Bompton and Fruit Town is his hood. He would even walk around Fruit Town. Yeah, watch this. They say Big Soldier ain't from the hood. <laughs> fruit Town Pyro was too. We the real Who ain't from Fruits? Who ain't from Fruit Town? I'm walking through Bompton right now. I'm in my hood right now. So Holla Suwoo, the blood starts swarming. This was not a good look for LA because it makes their streets look watered down and really just a joke. Some Fruit Town members would feel the same way. All that, all that entertainment shit, that shit out, bro. We do our own rap shit. If we, we do our own shit right now. But a lot of people want to know how could, how could Soldier Boy just pull up over here and walk around like that? He can't. Got, the blood ain't finished. I mean, just come over here by himself and none of that. Without the blood, ain't none of that. But well, ain't none of y'all do nothing. That man's still walking around though. Like y'all think it's talking tough, but that man's still walking around though. He Fuck out of here. Up in this y'all let that nigga rock around y'all neighborhood like it was another day. Like it was a random nigga in the street. Come on, man. Claiming hoods Come on, man. And saying they're members, you can't talk tough later on. Up in the, predicament. the game would retweet YG's statement. Let's fast forward a couple years to June 28th, 2019. Treetop rapper Slim 400 is coming back from a show in a tinted car. He pulls up to his family's house, but that's where men are waiting for him. As soon as he steps out of the car, bam, he's hit nine times and his friends bring him into the house to try to hold his attention and make sure he stays awake. Somehow he ends up surviving. This event would have Treetop moving dangerous. Just five days later, things would get even crazier. YG's black armored Escalade would be driven by his friend James Harris on the night of July 3rd. YG would claim to be in Hollywood at the recording studio while his friend had his car. Well, James Harris would have quite the night in YG's car. He is driving down the 400 block of Spruce Street, right where YG grew up. That's when a police car gets behind him to pull him over. But before the cop can even get out of his car, James Harris hops out and bam! He absolutely fans out the police car, and in the process, he hits a 65-year-old neighbor. Ricky Starks was visiting his brother in Compton, and he happened to be riding his bike to the corner store when this happened. It's a sad story of wrong place, wrong time. But James Harris wouldn't be done causing chaos. He would go full GTA mode. He has five stars, and he decides to take off. LAPD sends a helicopter to follow him all the way to Inglewood. That's when Harris hops out and starts busting at the helicopter. The pilot claims that Harris hit the rotator, which is insane. Damn. So the helicopter backs away and eventually hundreds of police cars swarm him and apprehend him after he surrenders. When police would run the registration of the Escalade, they would find that it belongs to YG. So they would get a warrant to raid his Hollywood home. They would find what did he, what did he do YG though? the crazy incident. What did he do though? Let's fast forward to 2020. YG and Mozzie began working together on a joint album. They drop a hit song called Bumped Into Oak Park and record it in Mozzie's neighborhood. YG has high praise for Mozzie and sees him as this generation's Tupac. CML would laugh at this statement by YG. That's rapping friends. Oh man, nigga like the next Tupac. That nigga's the next bitch. And I slapped the shit both y'all. For even disrespecting Tupac like that. What do you guys think? Is YG right about Mozzie being this generation's Tupac? And is CML? I wouldn't would say age? Tupac, but well, either way, that's going to conclude this episode. I wouldn't say Tupac, but definitely Mozzie is a is a Mozzie is a is a is an incredible rapper though. I like I like his music. I like him. I like a lot of the new West Coast niggas. A lot of the new West Coast niggas I started listening to, like Mozzie, motherfucker, well, uh, RP, uh, uh. Uh, R.I.P. the homie. Uh, damn, I forgot his name. What is it? Uh, is it Draco the Ruler? Yeah, R.I.P. to him. Uh, Doggy Style. I like all them West Coast niggas. I like all them new West Coast niggas. All them new West Coast niggas. I like, I like they shit. I like they shit. But anyway, so that's just gonna about do it for this one, man. Stay out the streets. If you're not affiliated with the gang, stay out the gangs. Just live your life. Trust me. 
your life is more important. I'll see y'all in the next video. Till then, peace out.